So if we need to, go ahead and find the inverse. Uh, and again, guys, this isn't an algorithm thing. But remember, you guys did this again. Like you guys had this with the cheat sheet. So you probably like you probably just wrote it down there, and you're like, oh, well, if I need to use it, I'll just apply the steps. But it was like a little step-by-step -step formula. It, the main thing is we want to replace f of x with y. And then on question number nine, if you remember, like the x and the y coordinates flop. And that's what we looked at. We looked at the graph, how a function and its inverse, or the graph of a function and the graph of the inverse are related. And you could see they're reflected about the y equals x. Basically, the coordinates are swapped. So algebraically, that's all we're simply going to do as well, to swap the variables and now solve for y. But we got to be able to solve for y using inverse operations. And this is another mistake that students do is they don't follow the order of op the inverse order of operations correctly. Make sure you guys subtract by 8 first, then divide by 7. And then again, remember what you have just found is the inverse function. So use inverse notation, or at least that's what we did in our class. Now, in this test, I believe they get I just gave I believe they just gave the answer in terms of g of x, right? So they said g of x is the name of the function. And that's fine. They're just saying instead of inverse notation, they're going to call f inverse g of x. And you can call it h of x, k of x, whatever. Right? Also, just a little FYI, just make sure you guys, you know, they could also rewrite the answer like this. Right? So just make sure you're aware of different like, ways that the answer could be displayed. Um, you know, also, another way, too, 